Hi guys, Mrs. Jocko here for your writing lesson for this week and actually next week. Um, since there's only two weeks left of school, um, we are kind of combining some assignments to carry over for this week into our last week of school. So your writing assignment, um, as you've probably seen, is to write a persuasive letter um, talking about reasons why we should protect and save the rainforest. I'm not sure if at all over the last uh, week or so when you've been researching your animals, if you've come across how the rainforests are being destroyed and destructed and how that devastation is affecting not just the rainforest, but um, the animals that live there, the plants, and then it affects us even here in um, Pennsylvania because of the trees that are being cut down, all the oxygen that's being lost in the air from the trees being destroyed and so forth. Now, last week you had to read the story, The Great Kapok Tree, and I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, we read this every year in third grade and um, you're going to get your actual very own copy to keep. Shh secret. But anyways, in the beginning of the story, I'm not sure if you read this letter from Lynn Cherry or not, and I know it's backwards to you, but she talks about how we can write a letter to um, the children's rainforest, and we can send that letter. It's an actual address, and we've done this many years now, but we can write a letter and send it there and just try to reinforce why the rainforests need to be protected. And so that's what we're going to do. So you'll need um, some paper and of course you'll need to do some research. Now I have a website um, that I had found on saving the rainforest and uh, I'm gonna take you there, but. And if you need this website, I will um, try to post it too along with the assignment on Google Classroom. But there are many websites out there I'm sure you can search for, um, even if you just type in, you know, rainforest destruction or how to protect the rainforest. There are a lot of organizations trying to work to save the rainforest. And so this particular one is um, raintree.com, and it just gives a lot of facts about the rainforest. So really, you just need to read some facts, and in those facts, it tells us some wonderful reasons why rainforests are important. So I would suggest, as you are researching, to take some notes and to jot down some things that you come across. I'm just going to share with you some of the facts on this website, and then work through the steps that I took to um, find some facts, and then to put my facts into a letter. So the first fact says that we are losing Earth's greatest biological treasure, just as we are beginning to appreciate their value. Rainforests once covered 14% of the Earth's land. Now that's not a lot, 14% is not a lot, but now they only cover about 6%. So that means rainforests are diminishing. And experts estimate that the last remaining rainforest could be consumed or destroyed, gone, in less than 40 years. Boys and girls, 40 years is within your lifetime and your children's lifetime. Could you imagine living in a world where rainforests aren't there? Um, it says that one and a half um, acres of rainforest are lost every Second. So think of an acre um, as approximately the size of a football field, okay, around that amount. But every second, that amount of rainforest is gone, destroyed. Rainforests are being destroyed because the value of rainforest land is perceived as only the value of its timber by short-sighted governments, logging companies, and landowners. Meaning, um, when we destroy the rainforest, we are just going there for the land, for the trees, and it's very short term. We're seeing short term gains. Like, yes, we're getting all these trees. That's going to really help the logging companies. 
But then in the long run, we're not understanding the effects of cutting all those trees down. Companies are just seeing the short-term gains financially. They're making a lot of money cutting down all those trees, but they're not thinking about the effects of that later down the road. Now, here's a big thing. Nearly half of the world's species of plants, animals, and microorganisms are going to be destroyed, gone, or severely threatened over the next quarter century due to rainforest devastation. So within the next 25 years, that's a quarter century, um, a lot of animals and plants are going to become extinct or become severely endangered because there are so many animals and plants that only live and grow in these rainforests. And if we are cutting them down and the size of them has gone from 14% of our earth's surface down to six, these animals and plants have nowhere to live, nowhere to grow, and that is devastating. Now, ex experts, at, ugh, I can't talk, experts estimate that we are losing 137 plant, animal, and insect species every single day. So 137 plant species, gone every day. 137 animal species, different types of animals, gone every day. And same with insects because of the devastation and rainforest deforestation. That equates to 50,000 species a year. So when we say species, we're talking about different kinds of something. And 50,000 species of plants, animals, and insects to be just wiped out and gone, that's a lot. So as these species disappear, so do many possible cures for life-threatening diseases. Guys, 121 prescription drugs sold worldwide come from plant-derived sources. Plants that grow in the rainforest are helping people to stay alive in medications. And if we're getting rid of rainforests, we're getting rid of where those plants grow, we're getting rid of the medicines that people need to survive. All right, now, most rainforests are being cleared by chainsaws, bulldozers, and fires for its timber value. And then once the trees have been cleared and the logging companies have got their timber, the land is used for farming and ranching. Um, even by world giants like Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi I can't say it, Mitsubishi, <laughs> um, Georgia Pacific, Texaco. These are all like big worldwide companies and they are taking over the land um, in the rainforest and they don't care about the destruction they're causing. They are only concerned about making money. All right, now, there was once estimated um, 10 million Indians living in the Amazonian rainforest five centuries ago, so 500 years ago. Um, today, there's less than 200,000. So from 10 million native people living in the rainforest, down to 200,000. People live in the rainforest. It is not just home to animals and plants and insects, but people like you and me. This is where they've um, grown up, where their ancestors have lived. This is where their culture is found, and yet we are destroying their land. Now, there are so many facts, boys and girls, that we could read about the rainforest, okay? For instance, I love this fact here. It talks about how the Amazon rainforest has been described as the lungs of our planet. Because when you think about it, what do our lungs do? They breathe in air. We need oxygen in the air to survive. And more than 20% of the world's oxygen comes from just the Amazon rainforest. So even though we live nowhere near the Amazon rainforest, the trees in that forest are still putting oxygen into the air and that oxygen is needed all around the world for people to survive. All right, so guys, I encourage you to get passionate about this. I love teaching this unit um, and I'm so disappointed that we're not in school to um, learn about this together. But there are so many reasons why we need to protect the rainforest. 
So as you do some research, as I mentioned, take notes, get a writing journal, a piece of paper, whatever it may be, take down some notes. If you're able to print out your research and you can highlight. I took some notes um, previously based on what I had read about um, the oxygen, over half of all the plants and animals live there, um, 2,000 plants for food, coffee, chocolate, fruits, nuts, corn, avocados, so many things that we enjoy every day come from the rainforest. I wrote down medicines from plants that we get. It's home to people. Um, in in a, over 100 years, the rainforest will completely be gone. I mean, I think it even said in 40 years in that article we just read. Um, about 36 football fields of the rainforest are destroyed each minute. I mean, every second a football field is um, destroyed. Lots of concern here when we think about what's happening to these rainforests. So take some notes. And once you have some solid notes on why we should protect the rainforest, we are going to write a persuasive letter. Now, I did write my letter ahead of time. Um, but I want to review it with you and go over the parts of the letter that we know we need to include. Pay attention to this, boys and girls, because I've seen some of us slacking a little bit with our writing and maybe leaving some important parts out. So we need to always start with the heading. And the heading of our letter is the date. So I put today's date, May 18th. 2020. You should always write the date out instead of using the numbers um, like 5-18-20. That just makes it seem more formal, especially in a letter. Now, after you have your heading, we need the greeting. Now, since I'm not entirely sure who's going to receive this letter and especially the person's name that's going to open it up and read it, so that, um, so when we come into that kind of situation, most people would address the letter to whom it may concern. That means to whoever the letter gets to, whoever is important enough to read it. And remember, when we write the greeting, we capitalize all of the words in the greeting and we put a comma after it. So you might want to pause the video and write this greeting to whom it may concern. And it just kind of sounds fancy and formal too. Once we have the heading, the date, and then the greeting, our hello, to whom it may concern, we are ready for the body of our letter. And that is the bulk of what we need to focus on. Your assignment states that you need to write two paragraphs, two paragraphs. I separated my paragraph um, my two paragraphs, one into kind of talking more about the animals and plants that live there and then specifically mentioning an animal like the sloth because I learned a lot about the sloth in my previous research on rainforest animals. And then my second paragraph you'll see talks about some of the things that we get from the rainforest and why it's important to um, protect the rainforest so that we have those wonderful things. So you might want to do the same thing. Maybe take one paragraph to describe the rainforest, the layers of it, the animals that live there, and then your second paragraph to talk about why um, we need to protect it. So I want to read my paragraphs to you. Feel free to share some of my same ideas. Obviously, you can't copy the letter word for word. I want to hear your thoughts. And again, make sure it is two paragraphs. You have two weeks to work on this assignment. So I don't want to hear any whining or complaining, guys. We would be doing a lot more writing in class, trust me. All right, so I said, rainforests are home to over half of the world's plant and animal species. So why are we destroying them? Notice how I indented that first sentence. And it is a topic sentence. You need to introduce your paragraph. And I chose to start with a question to try to capture my reader's attention. You could certainly start with a question or you, should, you could just make a bold statement. I then go on to say, every second we are losing one and a half acres of land, which is causing around 137 plant and animal species to disappear. 
This equals about 50,000 species a year. Sloths spend nearly their entire lives in rainforest trees. Sloths and many other animals are losing their homes, which isn't fair. Some animals can only live in tropical rainforests. Did you know people live in rainforests too? Boys and girls, the more facts you give and the, the stronger you present your feelings into your paragraphs, the more persuasive you're going to come across. You want people to really understand the, um, the consequences of the actions of those cutting down the rainforest and really make them think twice. The next paragraph, notice I indented to show that I'm on paragraph two, and I have another topic sentence leading into what this paragraph is about. So it says, rainforests provide the world with so many wonderful things, so we need to protect them. Now I'm going to get into telling you about those things the rainforest provides. Many tropical fruits, foods, and oxygen from trees needed for us to breathe come from rainforests. Also, many plants in the rainforest are used in medicines, which is so important for our health. Before we chop down another tree, we need to think of the future for our earth. Let's not destroy her beauty. So the second paragraph, I focused more on what the rainforest provides to us, like the foods, fruits, um, oxygen. The first paragraph focused mostly on how much is being destroyed, the plants and animals that are being destroyed, and how um, you know some animals can only live in the rainforest. Make sure you have a lot of facts and details. If you need help finding resources to collect facts, please let me know. I will be more than happy to provide you with some um, websites or articles, things that you can find facts to include into your writing. Once you have those three parts of your letter, your heading, reading, and then the body, you are ready to do the last two part, parts which go together. That is your closing and your signature. I chose to say sincerely for my closing. Um, you could choose something else. You could just say from. Um, sincerely is pretty, pretty standard um, when you're closing out a letter to someone, especially when you don't know the person. You don't want to say love or your friend. Um, so sincerely, make sure you capitalize the S and put a comma after the closing. That's kind of like our way of saying goodbye. And then the very last part that you do is your signature. You sign your name. Um, you don't have to put your last name. You can just put your first name. That is fine. We don't really need people we, we don't know to know who we are entirely. So just putting your first name. Um, if you wanted, you know, you could even underneath your name, you could just put um, Mercer, Pennsylvania. Um, oops. <laughs> that would tell them where the letter is coming from. Um, it's not necessary, or you could put your name, you know, and say third grade student. That way they know who's writing it, knowing that this is coming from a third grader, uh, because children can be very powerful in persuading others um, to change, you know, their actions and behaviors. Once you have um, your letter completed, at this point, you would need to take a picture of it and send it off to me so that I can verify that you completed your writing assignment. Now remember, you have two weeks to complete this assignment. So if you don't turn it in to me this week, I promise I will not be emailing or calling and um, questioning where your letter is. You have two weeks to work on this. Maybe you wanna break it up and do um, the first week your research, collect your facts, Maybe do a, a rough draft and then the last week, you know, finalize your letter, um, you know, proofread it and make sure it's good to go. Um, if you want to illustrate a picture that goes with your letter, that is absolutely fine as well, but not required. Once you have everything complete, you've taken a picture, 
and you send it to you you sent the picture to me so I can check off your work we are encouraging you to go ahead and mail this letter let's make a difference why do this assignment just to get you know a, a point for doing it but actually benefit the world by sending your letter and, and seeing what difference it can make so this is here um, an example envelope of how you would need to address the letter to actually mail it. And you might need to have mom or dad help you with this. The address is on your assignment sheet as right here. We always start with the mailing address. That's who you're sending the letter to. And this is going to Children's Rainforest. So that's who um, we're sending it to, the, the name of the company. And then P.O. Box 936, that would be, you know, their mailbox number. And then it would be going to Lewiston, Maine. That would be the city and the state. Maine is way up north. And then the zip code 04240. And this address is right in the front of the great K-pop tree story that Lynn Cherry wrote. And it's also on your assignment sheet. So don't feel like you have to scramble to, to write down that address. Once you have your mailing address, and notice how it kind of goes um, in the center of the envelope, you want to put a return address. The return address is your address. Just in case the letter were to get lost or um, it's not deliverable for some reason, it'll get sent back to you. And so I put my address here, my name, Mrs. Jockle, 248 Home Avenue, my house and street number, um, and then Butler, PA, 16001. So it's not necessary to have a return address. It, your, your letter will still be mailed if you don't have one. But again, it's just so that you know if something happens to the letter, it, get, it gets lost along the way, it'll be sent back to you. And then in order to send a letter, you have to put a stamp on it. Now, I had to look up today how much stamps cost because I wasn't even sure nowadays how much stamps were. Stamps are 55 cents. Your parents might have some already. You can get them at some grocery stores and certainly the post office. Um, you will just need one stamp, so 55 cents, and it goes in the top right corner of your envelope. That is your postage. You're paying to send that letter. And, you know, that money is needed for the post office to process your letter and make sure it gets to the right place. So we really encourage you to send your letter after you wrote it for your assignment um, to actually, you know, send it out, make a difference. And who knows, maybe in 40 years from now, Rainforest will be taking over more than just 6% of the land's surface. So boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the Rainforest. Um, there are many wonderful shows about the Rainforest, lots of videos you can find, lots of articles and books to read. I encourage you to do that maybe over the summer on a board, rainy day. Um, but if you have any questions or need any help with your writing assignment, please reach out to your teacher. I know we'd be more than happy to help you out. Best of luck. Make sure you include all five parts of your letter and send it off to us whenever you are finished. All right, guys, have fun. Now go get busy. Bye.